You understand consequences and repercussions very well. Why are you such a habitual line stepper? Why do you cross that line so often when you know what the repercussions and consequences are going to be? And they're not going to be favorable to you. For example, right. I saw where you and uh, Shug got arrested, right? You and Shug got arrested, is that true? Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Okay. Like, and... What, what were we doing? Allegedly, it had something to do with, like, some type of photography, or camera, or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm just sure. Oh. I'm just saying this is what I read. I well, know. I'll tell you the story, yeah. and okay. you tell, tell me, the then does that change how you frame this? Okay. So, um, we have a meeting with a hologram company, which is going to go into a licensing deal on some holograms. This is in Beverly Hills. So now there's a rodeo, and behind that is an alleyway where you park your vehicles. That's where we are. Uh, Suge has brought his son with him, who's five years old. And before we go into this meeting, Suge's son runs behind the dumpster and urinates. And a lady films his penis out, peeing behind the dumpster. And then says, oh, I thought that was Cat's kid. So yeah, that's what happened. See, see, man, see, this is So understand, we were facing 20 years, Suge and I. 20 years for that. And if it wasn't for the fact that this is Beverly Hills and it's all on camera, they had no problem sending us up the river when we couldn't have possibly done what was being said. That, That lady said that she got jumped on by me. So you see what you just did? You just clarified a huge, like, uh, misconception about, you know, the events of that that evening or whatever. Yeah, but remember, it went to court. Like, this isn't just my word. This, they had to play the video in court, which showed that her altercation wasn't with a man at all. But the trip part about it is that when people print it, when the media, mainstream media put it out there, they Mm -hmm. don't add that piece. No, nor, nor do they make a retraction. Right. Nor do they say, hey, that thing we told you about that right. guy, turns out it was nothing. Under, understand, I got 15 cases that were dismissed. That, that should be talked about. Why, why, would, why would 15 cases be dismissed? Because you were so sure you had what you were looking at. Because every city I go to, I'm the nigga with the best car. It's probably smoke coming out that car. It's probably girls gathering around that car. I I look like the plug. I get it. <laughs> and you probably already hurt me by the time you find out who I actually am. Right. See, because of that clarity you just provided, yes. is the reason why I wanna know. I think the world wanna know what happened between you and Alisa D. I know you said the world couldn't possibly want to know that he's not famous enough for the world to want to know that because my side of the world doesn't want to know that. See, my side of the world. Here's here's the thing. What happened, man? A lot of times what liars do first is they set up a narrative and a scenario like Michael Blackson just got on national TV and told people, yeah, I got a beef with Cat Williams and Cat is mad at me about this and because I said this and I didn't even mean it like that. And the whole time, he's never talked to me. That's how he feels. He's heard I'm angry. I've not had a conversation with him. It's the same with your Ali Sadiq. If it wasn't for the information that I know in my intel, I would be a fan of his like everybody else. Who wouldn't be a fan of a young black storyteller that's done time and loves his family and is a hometown guy? Like, why would he ever have any enemies in comedy? It's ludicrous. But if you pick the actual king, then make sure that your story's correct. And unfortunately, his story's not correct. No matter what he says, he never met me. 
He made it disrespectful that a security guard that was six foot seven reached over him to pay him. Not, uh, not mentioning the fact that he got paid for not doing anything. Well, let's start. Let's start at the beginning of the reliant thing. Uh, I don't start, know. If I'm, I wanna. I'm gonna go start, ahead. and then you can do what you want to do. Fair enough. But I think for for the sake of the audience knowing, we'll just tell them who an Ali idea Sadiq of what is. We're talking first. about Ali Sadiq is a comedian from Houston that's based based in Houston. A very uh, fine comedian. Very fine comedian. Yes. Now, Ali Ali said that he went to a Reliant uh, uh, Arena to, and he was on the same show as you. He showed up and they dis uh, the uh, security stopped him from entering the building. And, he, and they said, Kat, and then somebody told him, Cat didn't want you to come in. And then at some point, somebody else came and gave him a check. That's the, another sec a security person reached over somebody's shoulder and gave him a check. He said that the, the people that were the working security locked arms to prevent him from walking inside of the building and he thought that you know you had a problem with him and he said he didn't know why you had a problem with him and to this day he don't know why you have a problem with him that's what he that was the, the yeah. it'd be nice if that was the story so now if that's the story then let me see if I got this correct a guy I've never met was supposed to be doing a show with me and I got so angry, even though I hadn't met him, that I had security keep him out of the building. See, that's the problem with lies. They're, they're faulty from their inception, sir. I'm the person in the story that doesn't have a grudge to feel. I don't care why I didn't like Cat Williams. I would get to the bottom of it. This is not one of those stories. First of all, the actual truth of this matter is Every city that I go to, I already have the comedians who are opening up for me. Not just this tour, but for the 17 100 city tours previous to this. I never go to the city and go, hey, do you guys have some comics here? I'd like to add them to my show. I just don't do it. I travel with the comedians that are coming to your city. We're one unit and one team when we come. That is to let you understand that no comic was fin to come join us that evening because there isn't space for it. I still have to do an hour at the end of this. There's a limited amount of time. So we could just start there. Second of all, I don't care where you're from, what the venue is, how cool you are with the people that work there. Cat Williams show means Cat Williams show. That means don't not move but the money. There ain't no loud talking and voice raising and, well, I, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you? How, let me look on the advertisements and see, do I see your name or face, sir, whoever you may be? Where would you even get the entitlement to be having this question? This is like me insisting that the Lakers put me on as a starter. And I won't take no for an answer. It's ridiculous. You don't even play in our league. And that's before I knew who you were. Now that I know who you are, I'm just ashamed because you took something personal that couldn't have been personal. I didn't meet you. That's how it would have gone if I wasn't there because the truth is I wasn't there. All of this happened before I got there. What happened with the check? When the security guy um, gave the When check? I heard, when I asked what the person had said, I said, well, I don't understand. I don't understand why he's so angry. What did he say to you? He said, I'm supposed to be on this show. I said, well, well, maybe he was expecting to get some sort of a payment. And, and now he thinks he doesn't get to get paid because we already have a tour. I, I wouldn't want that. Pay him for performing. So he got the check of the performer. This is what he's angry about.
imagine the audacity. Remember, your story is that I'm kicking you the fuck out. Get out and lock arms and don't let him in. And paying you, make it make sense, King. So, Either you're smaller than I think or I'm bigger. Either one. Like, you can't keep positioning the narrative because that's all this is. This is so that in a conversation in America, there'll be something where he and I are evenly linked and only people in his hometown are floating that narrative. You, I'm you really know, him. You, you, don't, you don't believe that there's under any circumstances that you know, you and I, Lee, can come to a resolution, just be cool. You know, like, you just talked to me. You know yeah. I don't have a bone in this. Yeah. I don't have a bone in this. So if I got him on the phone, y'all, you talk to him? I would have gave him the celebrity boxing match he asked for if I thought he was a celebrity. Oh, come on, man. Celebrity. Come on, Sir, Kevin. I'm not talking. I, I didn't mean that disparagingly. Yeah. I meant that in ticket sales, my nigga. Ticket sales. That's what I meant. <laughs> I meant I'm doing 7,000 in your hometown while you go do 300. I'm not being disrespectful. I'm talking statistics. I'm talking about the biggest and baddest thing going. And you, a person trying to get in. Why would you be mad? It, it's, it's ridiculous. I'm offended. <laughs> I'm offended. Why? Because even if it's celebrity boxing, I need you to sell tickets too. I need you to sell these pay-per-view numbers, my nigga. I know I'm bringing it. It's a whole, it's more people that want to see me get laid out by you. And the fact that an upstanding and righteous gentleman like yourself is in that position with the only thing trying to be righteous in our lane is just more machinations of the devil. You should have a much better backstory well, you know when you pick me as an opponent. You know what, man? I'm, I'm glad you at least, you know, you know, addressed it, you know, because uh, I, when I, you I, when you talk to him and tell him what the truth is, he won't be able to refute it. I told you earlier, he doesn't know this. How could he know? It's OK for you to think that I'm that way, but there are 30,000 known comedians in America that you could have went to and they would have told you this is against my character I am known for confronting my issue head up be it Satan or his affiliates I don't care if you six foot six I don't care if it's five of you I'm not I don't care if I'm guaranteed an L I don't care if you put a gun in my face I don't care about none of that I care about doing the right thing as I see it in that moment yeah. Man, how did you get on in the first place as far as like with the movie thing? Like I know I'm skipping over the comedy, but how did you get on with the movie thing? Like specifically I wanna know about Money Mike. I wanna know how you got that role. Right. So here's the whole thing. Liars always come up with terrible lies. So Ricky Smiley says, yeah, you know, Cat was supposed to play the Santa Claus and I was supposed to play the pimp. Liars always have ridiculous narratives. Nobody in America can imagine that a real movie studio would cast five foot five, 145 pound Cat Williams as a fucking Santa Claus, number one. Number two, Ricky Smiley was finna play a pimp. Really? Ricky Smiley has played a woman more times than Ricky Smiley has played a man. He's played Bernice Jenkins five times. I got it in my contract that I don't work with Ricky Smiley unless he's playing Miss Bernice Jenkins. Get but, out of here, man. But that's it, in your contract for real? I make my contracts, no, sir. Oh, you when know. you're the master of your masters, everything else is subservient. That's why we have control. That's why we're hated, because there's something to hate. But anyway, so Money Mike, this is my first audition, not just my first movie. 
It's my first audition. Um, the reason it was so great is because they allowed me to do what I wanted to do and I needed to do things. So I needed to pick the wardrobe for the character. So Money Mike's wardrobe was impeccable because I designed it and they made it so. I picked out the car, um, the color of the car. Uh, they had a guy playing a pimp. I need this to be an actual pimp. We need Bishop Magic Don Juan. Uh, everything I had to do, um, me and KD Albert, who played Donna and Terry Crews, it was all of our first project. And my job was to make sure that we came off as if we were seasoned actors. And so I put everything I had into that movie to the point where in the script Money Mike is raped in the bathroom. Cat Williams changed that. Why? Because it's no way. What do you mean Cat? <laughs> There's no way. What are you saying? I'm saying in a place that small I'm not rapable. I don't care what has to happen. That's what will happen. And so that's how it changed and became a great uh, movie. And just the thought process that maybe Ricky Smiley was going to do that it is laughable. But yeah, that was, that was going to be my only movie. So I had to do everything that I could do to make sure that it went the way I needed it to. And I, I've done that in every uh, one of the 60 movie roles that I've done in the 50 network television roles. Man, I'm glad you stood on that, man, because it's a lot of people who would not have. They, people get blinded by that bread, man, or that opportunity. And right. for you to stand on that, that says a lot, because I know Terry Crews would have probably enjoyed it, you know, in real life. <laughs> oh, uh, bless his heart. Yeah, <laughs> bless yeah. his heart. Um, <laughs> 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 now, how did you, how did you get this, uh, this knack for comedy in the first place? Like you, I mean, you, you, you had a, you know, a, a pretty uh, tumultuous childhood. Like, how do you pivot from that and get into comedy? Hey, I didn't find it to be tumultuous. Um, once, so at the time, yeah. So at the time, you, you was living it. You were like, yeah, you see it yeah. Like this that. is not tumultuous, okay. but. But your question was, how did I? How did you find comedy? A lot of times you have the true appreciation for something when you're not trying to do it. You just like it. So that's the relationship that I had with music. And it was the relationship that I had with comedy. So musically, I could listen to Pearl Jam and the Ghetto Boys. Like, I could listen to Nine Inch Nails and I could listen to Prince. And I could, I could do that. And comedically, I found that I could do that too. It didn't matter what the comedy person looked like or how they were built or where they were from. If they were funny, I was gonna be able to tell. So I understood that Don Knotts was out there working his ass off um, as Barney Fife. I understood he wasn't doing the same job as the rest of them. I, 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 I understood that laughter is an emotion and anytime you can tap an emotion, that's very powerful regardless of what emotion you're tapping. When you're tapping these emotions, before you deliver the joke, are you cognizant of what it's gonna take to like deliver that joke? Like, are you already knowing that, I know for a fact, I don't have to practice this, they gonna be with this right here. When I say this, oh, I'm gonna get them. Um. As a comedian, I have the best fan base in the world, like documented. Um, you do? Um, the, 
the slight amount of advertisement that they allowed me to do and the fact that in a place as glorious as Houston um, they pack uh, the arena to the rafters um, is based upon the fact that I in 1995 started a conversation with a fan base which was maybe five people and through this entire time, I've kept up the same conversation with the same people as they grow. And um, I'm letting you see me win. I'm letting you see me lose. I'm never allowing the product to be affected by what's going on because this is the greatest relationship here so um yeah consequently bam they know some things when i come to town they know i'm finna bring the baddest comedians with me that's who's gonna be opening up they know this all over the country and then they know that whatever it is cats gonna talk about for an hour they know he did not talk about this the last time he was here they know Man, that. how in the hell do comedians get away with that anyway? Because I'm not going to see the same comedian tell the same jokes, you know, a hundred times in a row. You like, let a rap, you let a rap, you let a rapper rap the same songs, though, and you let a singer sing the same songs, the classics, and you you'll allow that. And so yeah, but but funny is supposed to be spontaneous, so that's the it, difference. Well, well, understand that comedy has its roots long before social media, so. Before social media, you might have heard that this comedian is funny, right? And somebody might have told you what he said. But it didn't sound that funny to you. They just told you what he said. But when you see him in person, oh, he's hilarious. And so comedy always had a cycle where you showed the whole circuit your body of work. It's just comedians had gotten so lazy that they were doing one great set that they had on Comic View or Def Jam and they were touring that for 15 years without changing it. And so we made it a part of our effort to push the fact that you should be writing new material and shaming the community into it by just, I'm going to keep putting out these specials and this new material. How long are you going to continue to tell these jokes? Because in a minute, the audience is going to be like, no, they got to say something new. And eventually the audience did do that. And but, so... Well, some, some audiences show up and they want you to say the old joke. They demand I, that you tell the old joke. I, I don't have not one of those people in my fan base because they know better. They know that I would never let you pay me so you can hear some shit I already said. I respect you too much for that. What you gonna get from me is brand new. This is new. Right now you have 12 comedy specials. Okay. Is there a magic number in mind or you just wanna just keep them, keep running to make sure you got the all time number and, and that's secure? Are you already at the I'm, top? I'm, you got the I'm, 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 you got more I'm in no way, I'm in no way counting numbers <clears throat> low brow comedians come here and disrespect you in your face <laughs> and tell you straight up lies <laughs> I'm talking about things that have never been heard in all of black Hollywood they feel comfortable sitting here lying to you about it you gonna set the record straight? Are you kidding me? You let Ricky Smiley sit here and you said out that mouth, you stole Friday after next, the one I was in. <laughs> I wish all, oh, all of America fumbled a bit when that happened. And, and then he said some stuff that we haven't heard in 100 years in Hollywood. You ain't say nothing. But this man told you he had Cat Williams' role. He was gonna be Money Mike. Wait. And Cat Williams was gonna be fr was gonna be the Santa Claus. Now let's three quick points. Three quick. You mean in Hollywood they cast a five foot five black Santa Claus that weigh 145 pounds? That's your story. Your story is the Ricky Smiley that couldn't even do curse words because he had a Christian fan base. He was going to play the pimp. Why you didn't ask him why has he played a woman in more movies than he's played a man? 
Well, I didn't know he, he shouldn't be able. You wouldn't let a, 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 a athlete that been on steroids talk about one of the greats. <laughs> Ricky Smiley can't act because Ricky Smiley can't act. He told you the story about when the movie came out. Where did he say he watched it? At home. He wasn't even at the premiere. You telling this man you stole that all oh, so he could get his name in the same sentence with a great one. It is sad. He was just that bitter when we were shooting it. He told everybody, it should have been my role. Everybody on the scene. Why do you think no cast member has ever said anything? He couldn't have played that role like you. I thought he, he Sir, was- Sir, no one, why no? He was with KD? He beat up Terry Crews? Why nobody know this story? You talking about in Hollywood, they switched off roles. You take this and he, what? So Ricky, Ricky Smiley knows this, and I don't know why he would lose a child and come on the air and start lying. That's why people believe in rituals right there. It's because, well, why would he lie? I don't know why liars lie, but I can tell you this. We auditioned in Los Angeles. Yes. I was audition number 201. 200 black comedians auditioned for the role of Money Mike with me. You're saying all 201 of us was auditioning and you had already had the role and had already shot the role in four days? The truth of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom. And that's what Ricky Smiley was okay with. Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully, humbly, guys, if we talking about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull. But we talking about comedy, right. where I have all the credibility and all the pull. The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy and this comedy involves a rape. And rape is never funny, no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny as it would be with him getting raped. So considering that's the real story, why would you bring up that story? 35 members of the cast and crew have never brought up that Ricky Smiley was gonna play Money Mike. No one ever saw me put on a Santa Claus suit. We got a wardrobe department. They made a Santa Claus suit for me. Why that wasn't in the bloopers? Why? And, and here's the other thing. Everything that Money Mike said, Cat Williams wrote. So what Ricky Smiley say on his? You can't say my lines, I wrote them. That's how I already know that I'm going to be funnier than you. What he told everybody was, Cat Williams, hey, hey, don't nobody know who he is? I'm on the radio. I'm with Steven Said. Everybody know me. That's what he told everybody that would listen to on the set. That's the truth of the matter. He was so egregious, not now, then. He was so egregious that, and Hollywood has never heard this in a hundred years. He was so egregious, I put in my contract that I won't work with Ricky Smiley again unless he's in a dress. Now, what was Ricky Smiley's next movie? Was it First Sunday? Did he wear a dress in it? You bet he did, it's in my contract. Why would you put that in your, put his, in your contract, Cat? That's where he's the, a believable actor. Him and Tyler Perry can't play a man to save their life. They play good women. And I believe that the best actor should be in the best role. So that's why, because when we released that clip and he said that, you responded because he said he was supposed to play Money Mike and you were supposed to play, play Santa Claus. An outright lie. So That he knows is a lie. So why would he say it? Because he's a liar. Nobody knows why liars lie. And that's why I had to come on the program. Cedric did the same thing. Cedric told you when you asked him, did you steal Cat Williams' joke? Yeah. He said, it don't line up. How it don't line up that I did it on TV in 2018? You came to see me at the Comedy Store do it in 2019 and then did it on the Kings of Comedy. 
Like, what doesn't line up? I, this is a televised joke that Mark Curry helped me punch up and get to the level that it was. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit and he, and then he gets this high top fade making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business and it's a man unit. Then you ask it, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. This the same Negro that hated on Bernie with this same thing. I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asks for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good over cable and look like Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none. You would have to have range. I played a lot of characters, 60 movie roles. I'm not playing Cat Williams in there. I don't know, I don't know, Cat. We might not let you drink anymore the way you, you, I mean, we ain't even got- I'm not fueled by alcohol. I've had a sip less than you. The truth don't need motivation. I'm just saying I can't let these dudes lie. Cedric's sitting here telling you why he ain't a movie star. He over here look like a walrus. You didn't say nothing. He can't even get his but, arms off his be, stomach sitting over here. Why I'm can't, not a movie can't, star. Can't, can't, what? Can't. It's a situation. He never wrote anything. Remember, when Cedric the Entertainer starts, he's supposed to be singing, dancing, and telling jokes. That's why he's called the Entertainer. Right. We found out he can't sing, can't dance, and doesn't he's write doing jokes. An album. He did four comedy specials. They're so bad, Shannon. They're not available on Netflix or Tubi. Can I say that again for the audience? They're so bad that they're not available on Netflix or Tubi. You don't think Sam's a good, a, a good comedian? The world doesn't think that, sir. I have 12 comedy specials. He has four specials that are not available on Netflix or Tubi. It seems to me, Kat, that you had a lot to get off your chest. No, no. You wanted to set the record straight. Winners are not allowed to allow losers to rewrite history. I don't say any of these things if my name is not breached by these people on your platform. They, if you give them a liar a platform to lie, then I, I'm not being messy by saying, hold on, that never happened, it's untrue, and there are hundreds of witnesses for each thing I'm saying. So let me ask you this. What is your relationship with Steve Harvey, Ricky Smiley, and Cedric the Entertainer as you sit here currently? They, for 30 years, they're a group. These aren't three random guys. The way that Ricky Smiley kept appearing at all of my auditions is because of Steven said he would tell anybody that, listen, they got a gang on that side. They know what it is. They know who the gang is. Why Earthquake not in movies? Cause he's illiterate. He can't read. And they found that out when they gave him a show and put the cards in front of him. Like all of these dudes are co-entwined and they share secrets. And this is the age of truth. And, and, and the truth doesn't need to be scared of the fact that people tell lies. Uh, cats on drugs. Where are the stories? Why is there no story of anybody who ever sold a drug to me, did a drug with me, was around me when I was inebriated? I got five daughters, I got five sons. Why would we tell these ridiculous stories? Because it's co competition. You you feel like, well, why comedy, comedy guys can't just get along? Yes. Why, why, why didn't you get along with the other teams you were competing against? If you're a Denver Bronco, why you don't get along with the Cowboys? Something wrong with you? But I don't disagree. I don't no, dislike no, all the no. Cowboys. Cat, damn, you like this. No, like, that's okay, not. Okay, what comedian do you did like? Did you play against the team? Yes. I've taken 46 comedians with me on the road. 46. Okay. I'm not the comedian you can give that to. I only put on comedians that are funnier than me. Anybody that ever told you differently was a fat Faison liar. There's nobody yeah, you, like you, me in the business. Faison because just called it straight. Faison said that getting a Netflix special is easy. I have 12 specials. Guess how many Faison got? Zero. So Why is he allowed to have conversations about real stand-up people? We do not let people who are on the juice discuss real athletes. That's all. 
as a journalist. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I don't ha harbor any resentment to any of these entities because I can't be jealous. I've never seen them have anything that I ever wanted. If you sign up for their program, you get a light skin, weird face wife that never do an interview. Oh, in man, Listen, in 20 years, won't do an interview. Nobody's ever talked to her and that she's never been interviewed anywhere. And now understand, I'm not talking about one person. What I just told you applies to seven people. How they all end up with that. That's part of what you get. I came in this business saying I was gonna expose. When I talked about Michael Jackson, when I talked about R. Kelly, they canceled me for these things because why would you talk about another black dude? Race is not where the line is drawn. It's God's side and the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side, period. Period, all of these uh, big de deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is, TG Jakes, any of them, the, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, 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 and anyone who takes that the wrong way, know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. I need to have no more of these. Amen, amen. Gee. <laughs> Oh, I kind of <clears throat> get on there. Right. After that, I don't really kind of know where to go. Let me one more time. <laughs> mm, mm. Right. We good now? Because the people want to know why did he get blackballed? Yeah. Oh, because I was ask because that. because in thirty years I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets. So if you and a man was in a corner doing something you wasn't supposed to be doing? You will tell it. No, somebody come to tell me. Okay. I gather that, I value that, I'll pay for that. Come, tell me. I know so many things I shouldn't know and they all know it. They all know it. Why, because you don't make me the villain. Not the guy that raises black children and ain't never done a hard drug in his life and don't have no stories of doing nobody dirty. And they'll just go out and they'll lie. The the industry doesn't mess with Cat because he didn't show up for the studio. No studios have ever said that. Look at my IMDb. It will show you that no studio has ever lost money with me on the script. How? That's why I'm saying, that's why I can't let Ricky Smiley say he was supposed to play Money Mike. Because I wrote the words for Money Mike. I designed the hair for Money Mike. I collaborated with the wardrobe department and made outfits to make sure that no one in America would be wearing what Money Mike was wearing. I told them to go get the Prowler. I then told them to paint it purple. I told them don't have an actor at playing a pimp. We could get an actual pimp Archbishop Magic Don Juan to play. Like I. I did far too much work for somebody to come years later and try to tag along just for their own self-aggrandizement. Why didn't Cube set the record straight? Terry Crews could have set the record straight. Mike Epps could have set the record straight. Why none of them set the record straight? That's what you were supposed to ask him when he told you those lies that but no I didn't one's know ever heard. Right, but he's telling you something no one's ever heard of. Nobody has ever heard. Oh, Matt Aff Ben Affleck and Matt Damon was in a movie, and somebody said, y'all should switch roles. And, like, this is a business. But that's the thing, Cap. <laughs> Normally, when people are giving you information, I'm thinking I'm hearing it for the first time, and they're giving information no one else knows or has ever heard. So I'm taking them at face value. These are like, this is like Steve Harvey telling people he used to be homeless. That's my story. That's not his story. Steve Harvey was never homeless. When he, Mark Curry was touring with him 25 years ago, he was making $3,000 a show in cash and doing five shows a week. They, they just tell the stories. This, my, thanks to my wife, I'm where I am. You said that about the first wife. You forget <laughs> that? You told us it was her. Then you went and married somebody else that think like a man. Like, what are you talking about? They just, they think they can rewrite history. The, uh, uh, Guy Tory did a beautiful special about the comedy store and Fat Tuesday, where he said that Steve and Cedric and Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish came through there and made,
all lies. Steven Cedric never performed at the Comedy Store at all. Tiffany was only seen at the Laugh Factory. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy he club. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to LA and in his first year in LA, he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading. No, we've never heard of that before that person or since that person. What do you think a plant is? Maybe people don't understand the definitions of these words. He just did his documentary with Chris Rock where he shows you that his whole upbringing in comedy was on the East Coast. Yeah, it was. So how simultaneously was he here in Los Angeles doing the same thing? It didn't happen. It didn't happen. And I, I, I hate to seem like a petty individual for picking apart lies, but Jussie Smollett gonna keep lying until you say we don't believe you. Like it's important in the checks and balances of the universe that liars not get to make complete narratives for themselves. Are you not afraid about being blackballed again? These are some power people. What do you mean again? These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. That's why, do you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. They all do the same job. Why do you think Gary Owen can't cross over and he already white and been in comedy for 25 years? If what I say ain't the case. It's a cabal, it's a, it's a consortium. They, they rock with who they rock with and they don't with who they don't. But I'm not scared of being the competition any more than you were when you lined up uh, uh, across from a superior team. Yeah, on paper, they're a better team. Right. They have all the assets and resources and we don't. But let us get on the line, boy boy, and see if that factors in. I, I guarantee you it won't. Wow. Because Shannon Sharp got to be a different person than that other person. Absolutely. And he always was. That doesn't change when I change teams. That remains the same. That's how a legacy is built. So All of these shortcut takers, I, I was, they canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency. What am I supposed to do? He did all of that. I'm thinking I'm the only black person on the script. I get there, there's three other black guys on there. Woo. Huh. So you wonder what they did to get that? <laughs> I told him no. What y'all do? <laughs> <laughs> and this is why when I walk in a room, heads go down. Behind my back, I'm nothing. I'm just a regular old comedian that's bitter and jealous. But in my face, no, no, no. The king has walked in and they have to respect it only because I've not taken the shortcuts. I've not been funded. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. They tell you that themselves. Well, I can't do that because I. Uh, Steve told you that he stopped doing stand up because he has seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand up anymore. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big and it was Bernie and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. What? You called Ocean Eleven to get that nigga's part. What do you mean you didn't want to be a movie star? So on the behalf of Bernie, I, I would have to say what I have to say. Have you have ever been on truth. Have you ever been on tour with any of these guys? The guy, I, every guy I mentioned to you is not funny out there in real life. So, so no. Faison's never done his own tour in 30 years. Steve Harvey don't do stand up no more. Cedric doesn't write. I'm sorry, he doesn't write. Ricky Smiley has been playing the same old black woman forever. 
Like, you can't get a young fan base with that. Like, you got to be doing karaoke around the country to make that work. Right. And he is. But I'm a stand-up comedian. This is my 19th 100-city tour. I'm not going to have a conversation with these lazy bums that'll take a shortcut at any point. Yes, it's easier for you to juice than to get in the gym. But you don't get to bring that body in here talking crazy. Talk about how good you look. What? No, no, there's too many comics out there that are putting their life on the line to tell these jokes, man. Okay, let's get to your upbringing. We're going to circle back and we'll get some... Uh -huh. I want to protect him real quick. Cause you had said for the Kings of Comedy, it was in 2018, 2019. But did you mean 1999? Because it came out in 2000. So I just want to make no, sure. I didn't. No, no, no. So what I meant to say was, remember, he said I couldn't do stand up anymore. I had seven TV shows. I said he didn't have any of those TV shows at the time. I know you talking about. You talking about Cedric? Joke stealer. Cedric. Yeah, it's oh, Cedric. Okay, so you so, said that okay. 2018, 2019, but it came out in 2000, so I just want to make sure. Okay, no, 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 no. What comes out in 2000? The, the, the original Kings of Comedy. Right. My, I'm on BET's Comic View, and they're using this as the commercial in 1998. Okay. That's why I'm saying, yeah. So, so if I, yeah. Right. So if I yeah. said the dates okay. wrong, just, yeah. Just, so yes. you, let's go ahead and clear that up. Okay. You said, yeah. I had Cedric on here and I asked him about the joke stealing and yeah. he said the timeline doesn't add up. Correct. To your to to that point you say Right. So he thought that I was just a no-name comedian and that he could take this joke and nobody would know. Right. The issue was that I had already done this particular joke on BET's Comic View twice. Right. It had done so well on BET's Comic View that they had made it part of the commercial. So part of the commercial of make sure you tune in to BET was you seeing me doing this joke. Right. And this joke is one of those jokes in comedy where you set it up and it takes a little longer to set it up, it takes about three minutes. But then you're just hitting them with jokes after right. that because you don't have to set it up. Right. Uh, Mark Curry had already helped me work on this joke because I thought it was good because I was getting a standing ovation on it. He had me go back in the lab to help me craft it to be an even more powerful joke. So this is not just a random joke. This is my very best joke, and it's my last joke, and it's my closing joke. Okay. 1998, I'm doing this joke. It's on Comic View. Cedric comes to the comedy store. He watches me in the audience. He comes backstage. He tells me what a great job I did and how much he loves the joke. Two years later, he's doing that as his last joke on the Kings of Comedy and he's doing it verbatim. He's just changed my car into a spaceship. Him and Steve had already apologized for me, so I gave him a pass for a decade. Why would you sit here and be like, I talked to, I saw Cat 30 times <laughs> and Cat didn't do, as I stand before you, Shannon. I would have bust Cedric's stomach. <laughs> there was nothing that would have kept me from one of these in, in that patch right there. Like, are you kidding me? Why would you downplay me like that? Why did I give you a pass if you were just going to lie? And so that's what I'm saying. Like, they're all a group. Cedric, Steve, Ricky, they've been a group. Everybody knows that. They've been aligned. And, and there are these alliances in comedy. And if you stand against them, then they sometimes have a problem. But... We don't let that change the content because that's all you know me for is that I'm quite likely to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Can you believe we're this deep into the NFL season? We got to make every second count. With DraftKings Sportsbook, you can make the most out of every game day. Bet on your favorite teams for a shot at winning big bucks. New customers can score 150 instantly in bonus bets for betting five on any matchup. Get in on the action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Download the app now. Use code SHANNON. New customers can score 150 instantly in bonus bets for betting just five bucks on the NFL. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code SHANNON. The crown is yours. Let's get to your upbringing. Born in Cincinnati, Ohio, raised in Dayton, Ohio. Hmm. What was Cat Williams' upbringing like? 
your parents were Jehovah Witness. You were a, a prodigy. You were brilliant. You talked to me that you got accepted to college at seven years of age. You could read fluently at three years of age. So having that kind of knowledge, having that kind of a uh, 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 of, of, of prodigy, or so what was so I mean, was it? What was your upbringing? How how was it? How was life as Cat Williams crunk coming up? Um, I I. I was often confused because I knew things and I wasn't sure how I knew them. Um, I knew things that I f felt like I don't have a reason that I, I know this, but I, I love to read. Um, I was voracious because they told me when I was young that knowledge was powerful, uh, that knowledge was power and I, and I had studied powerful people and I, I, um, I really believed that I, I, I immediately my next project was to read the whole encyclopedia set. So when you're like six, seven years old, you read the whole encyclopedia set, you think you're one of the smartest people in the world, right. only to get out in the world and find out you don't know anything, you know? So it, um, it, was, a, it was a confusing time, but yeah, I had a childhood. I was, I was grown, but I, I, at five years old, I was in front of five, 10,000 people giving a performance with a full suit and tie on, <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. it hasn't, it had, it, it, it came full circle um, for my life. I knew that the applause and um, the giving of information and laughs and truth to people somehow benefited them and also benefited you. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so when they would ask me what I wanted to be, everything that I would say that I wanted to be was something that didn't exist. And they would never give me credit for it because I needed to say uh, a doctor or a lawyer, lawyer, but that's not what I wanted to be. So your parents weren't as supportive as you would have hoped because you were wanting to be things when you got older that they had no knowledge of or it didn't exist at the time. No, it, it wasn't that. It, it was, um, I'm saying I'm, <clears throat> I'm almost 100 years old right now, but if we go outside right now, I can run a 4340 or, or a sub. I can do a 416 if I'm Oh, there's Jimmy John's across the street. We can order a sub. But, um, oh, you've been on the submarine. Is that what you sub? So, um, so back then, it was even greater. So you got this guy that all the coaches want to play. Man, Cap, I don't do that. Hold on, because I'm... I'm five foot five in the fifth grade. I've been this size my whole <laughs> life. Like there was a portion of school where I was one of the big dudes. Like it just, as soon as everybody caught their growth spurt, I was out of there. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm saying I was a competitive individual. Mm -hmm. My father was an athlete. I can see like, that. Like, like, no, I've been 145 pounds my whole career. That's why I never bothered when they said, you cats on drugs. I knew, how you gonna prove that? I'm, <laughs> my body is a temple. I've been, I've been the same size since I was ten. Like, what do you? Yeah, like I, I, ha, I haven't, ch I haven't changed off this pivot foot. This has always been who I was before stand up or anything. But it was a, um, it was an interesting childhood. I, I, I appreciate my parents, even though um, I couldn't live within the religious frameworks of right. what they had set up. Um, but that was more not wanting to live a double life and not want to embarrass my family. You know what I mean? Because I read where a form of punishment for you is that they would take books because you mentioned you were such a voracious reader. And a form of punishment was when they would they take the books for them because you could read fluently. You, you, you told me how at like three or four years old, you could read, read, read. Not, not just a, a little child's book, but you could read, read. Well, I'm saying when we when we go to Haiti to do missionary work, understand that my mother and my father, nobody that's there with us speaks French. And I mean, it speaks Creole and reads French. So I'm in charge of everything from the housing to the cars to the the gardener. Like I, I'm saying so I'm not just reading. I'm reading in multiple languages. Like I'm, How probably, do you I'm probably reading 3000 books a year from the time that I'm eight years old to the time that I'm 12. No, no, no fiction books at all. I'm only reading nonfiction.
You could drive at 12, you received a full scholarship to the National Science Academy in Dayton, Ohio, but you failed, so you couldn't become, so you would become ineligible. Why didn't you want to take that opportunity? I didn't see it as an opportunity. When I got in there, all the students were wearing lab coats and it seemed very confined and restricted and nobody seemed like they were having fun. It just seemed like everybody was smart. I, I didn't want that. That, was, that wasn't what I was signing up for at all. And plus, um, I thought that I was, I, Jesus was my big homie. So you know how you get a story about a dude joined the gang and you get a big homie, mm -hmm. right? Like at this particular point in my life, I'm, my thought is that the Bible is the greatest book that's ever been written. Okay. That it houses the truth and that it gives you this story of Jesus and that I'm supposed to be like him. Okay. So I, it's already in my head that as soon as I get 13, I'm leaving. You, 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 at 13, you not only leave like, okay, mom, I'm moving out. You move from Ohio to Florida on your own. You weren't afraid. I mean, you like, did you? No, hold on. Did, did hold you on. not don't, have a, don't, what, so what were you going? So what were you going to do when you got to Florida? Don't say I wasn't afraid. There's no such thing as a human being of not being afraid. Okay. There are certain human beings that understand that being afraid in no way stops you from doing what you got to do. Okay. So um, I was I was afraid, um, but. I couldn't be that afraid because I knew what had happened with Jesus. I knew how it worked out. I, I, I knew that I wasn't in the wrong with how I was feeling and I knew that I, I didn't have any bad intentions in it. Right. So I trusted God that it would work out. Why Florida? Um, because I, if you're raised in Ohio, the one thing on your list is, I'm gonna get away from snow <laughs> and I'm gonna get as far I want to go, tell me the place. I literally went to a truck stop and I asked all the truck drivers where they was going. And it was one guy going to California and it was one guy going to Florida. And they told me how long it was going to take. And so that's why I ended up in Miami. Because. How'd I, you get there? You caught a bus? Or no, I just told you. I was at the truck, truck stop. I, so he you let hitchhike? Me, I got in, I didn't hitchhike. I got in the back of the dude's 18 wheeler, me and my Rottweiler puppy and my suitcase. <laughs> yeah, because I was, I probably had twenty five hundred dollars on me. Like I, like I was shoveling snow and cutting grass. Like I always had pockets full of money. When did you make the decision that you were gonna leave Ohio and go somewhere? And it ended up being Florida. So, but when did you know that you were leaving Dayton, Ohio, going to Florida? And my father and I's last interaction. Um, Somebody could have not made it. And we both understood that was all bad. What was the disagreement about? Um, if, if you t say that my family is very religious, let just say I'm not. So anything that I, I'm going to do is not is gonna fall out of the guidelines. Right. But I'm not gonna let you tell me what I'm going to be, even Especially if what you're saying is wrong. I can't condone wrong. And if I find out that something is wrong and I tell you it's wrong and you don't back me, that's what it is. Even as a young child, you were willing to tell your parents that some of the things that you're saying doesn't coincide with what I've been reading in, in, in the Bible. No, no, very simply, don't, don't try to disfellowship me for sexual acts and I'm a virgin. Sorry, God, don't make mistakes. You don't get two times to fuck me over. What do you mean you went to God and he told you I was guilty? <laughs> you just lied on God. So long. That's it. There's no conversation. Deuces. That's so that, what it was. That's when you made the decision. After yes. that conversation right there, you say, no, nah, I, can't, I can't live under this roof. It wasn't a conversation. It was an altercation. In the altercation, I love my father. My father loved me. But we are two men at it. That it'll never be the same again. You can't sleep comfortably around me, and I can't sleep comfortably around you. How similar are you to your father? No, um, I don't. I don't know. He's a great man. I, I'm, I'm saying uh, my, because seems like y'all butt, butted heads. Right, but I'm saying 
that generally happens with a father-son dynamic. It was just that um, religious relationships are always difficult right. in families. And they always are. Before it got to the point, because the dynamic, he's father, you're son. Before that dynamic and you step up on his level and you challenge him, you felt it was best for you to leave. No, no, no. I'm not being challenged, I'm being beat to death. Oh, he was abusive. I didn't say that. I said we were in an altercation. Oh, uh, <laughs> I see what you did there. I saw what you did there. I saw what you did there, cat. Yeah. I saw what you did. You was in an altercation. You didn't say you lost. You said you was in an altercation. I in no way gave you the impression that I won anything. I'm the one leaving. I'm out of bounds. This his house. Right. Yeah, yeah. You, so you, as long as I'm going to be under his roof, you there are certain father. things that I'm going to have to do. Right. And the only way that's going to change is either this or that. Right. And I, I, I'm i saying I had two younger brothers. Like, I'm not I'm not an unreasonable person. Like, I don't have any mental issues whatsoever, despite what they lead people to believe. You know, I make good, pretty good decisions. Were you not... Uh so how was their relationship with your father? Were you not afraid to leave them? Well, I asked because it it went all the way to the actual department. So it was actually going to be something. Um, and when I asked them if they could just make sure that my brothers didn't get separated and what have you. Um, they said they couldn't make those type of guarantees that they weren't really sure what would happen if this went down. And so part of leaving was the hope that it would be okay for them because not, none of them experienced what I experienced. I'm saying I'm the oldest, it's a lot riding on me. Right. I'm supposed to at least religiously hold down the family's name Correct. at this household, right. you know what I mean? How much older are you than the baby and the knee baby? Like a lot older, like I, if I'm I 12, think, I 13. Think, yeah, they're five and in Pampers. Wow. You go to Florida, you tell the story. I've heard you, you were homeless and right. somebody else told the story, said they were homeless and you said they they hijacked your story. Now I don't. Hey, I don't. At 13, I shouldn't have to tell you I'm homeless. I'm in a. I'm, I'm in Miami, Florida. I have no family members in Florida. I couldn't buy a house if I wanted to. I couldn't get an apartment if I wanted Correct. to. I don't have a credit history. Like, this is not a stretch for me to say that I'm homeless. I'm, I'm living in a park in Coconut Grove. The park still exists to this day. Mm -hmm. For eight hours a day, I would get up and go to the library and study for eight hours a day to increase my education. And then I would leave out of there and go to the marina and steal car radios and make $2,000 almost daily. Like I had a routine. This so you really could have played that San old thief in Santa Claus. You could have played it. No, the Santa Claus wasn't a thief. The Santa, yeah, he was, he the Santa Claus, you can't tell me. I read the script. Ricky Smiley told you he didn't read the script. The, the Santa Claus was a crackhead. He just had that outfit on. That's what I couldn't have played. Okay. Like I couldn't have played a black guy that got raped in the bathroom. Right. So at any point in time, you're like, man, I made a mistake, man. I should have stayed my butt in Ohio, man, because this is, man, this ain't what I signed up for. I didn't experience anything once I left home that I hadn't signed up for. If anything, it saved my life. Me being homeless for that small period of time allowed me to see all of the people that were in that situation and to see that these were lawyers and doctors and, 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 and teachers 